All right, before I get started on this video on this infrared camera, I want to explain through the years I've been on a hunt for a real good infrared camera that would uh, suit my needs. What my needs are is pointing a camera at the sky and picking up an immense amount of objects, satellites or whatever. And I ended up settling on what is called the Low Light King for cameras and it's Sony A7S and A7S II. They're quite expensive but and you have to buy lenses for them. And I've had quite a few IR cameras and they don't even nowhere near compare. Well, this Acaso literally uh, is turn on and go and you mount it on a tripod and point up in the sky. Uh, it compares to them. Not quite as good, but you ain't gonna get bang for buck. You're, just, you, you're not gonna get anywhere near as good as this camera, what it does. I am very impressed with it. So with that said, I'm gonna go in depth on this and what you get with it. It's impressive. Oh, and before I get too far, I'm gonna be mentioning an add-on IR light that I'm gonna be testing with this, even though the IR light itself on this Caso is wicked good. What I'm gonna be using is, it's made by Brightnight T18, and it's a Zoomy. I've got a lot of experience with IR lights, and this is by far the best IR light I've ever seen. So when I talk about it, that's what the flashlight is that I'm pairing this with, too. All right, what I got in front of me is a full color night vision goggle. Wouldn't necessarily call it a goggle, it's actually a camera. This is made by Acaso, this is Seymour 200. We're gonna get into the meat and bones of it right away. Uh, it comes with a real good case. Very heavy duty case, impressed with it. But right off the bat, you're not gonna have a strap on your goggles and be able to fit it in that case. It doesn't fit very well, but it comes with two batteries and they're 3,250 milliamp each. This thing will last, I'd say, four, four hours straight of recording without the IR on. You turn the IR on, it's gonna dim down. But it's got two of them batteries and they go in here in the back, easy to pop in and out. Uh, it charges on board with a USB-C and it comes with a nice long USB-C cable and a micro, US, uh, micro SD card is there, it comes with one of them 64 gigabyte, more than enough ample room. It is hard to get this out if you don't have fingernails. It's got quarter 20 tripod mounts on the top and bottom but if you mount it on the bottom Setting on a tripod, you're not going to be able to charge it, which you really don't have to. I haven't had to worry about that yet. But overall, compact unit, very rugged. I dropped it once in the car, didn't even phase it. Uh, comes with a big strap you can put over the case or onto the camera itself. This is the IR light, and that's just uh, the lens. The IR light, I think it's got four stages, maybe more, and that thing gets bright. And it's on an aspherical lens, it shoots out, I'd say, a solid 150 yards of IR light. Easy, which you'll see in the videos. It works great. Uh, the UI user interface is not too bad. It's fairly easy to get, get used to and remember. It does have an app, which is wicked. Maybe I'll hook that app up real quick and show you. Power it up right now. I just turned on the Wi-Fi hotspot. Go into your phone. I got a Google Pixel 7. My Nikaso Wi-Fi. Done. Wait for it to uh, let you know that it's not going to provide you with internet. You got to go through that step. Tap for options. Hit yes. Now we're going to go into the app. Device is powered up. It's a little bit behind on the Wi-Fi, but not too bad. What is cool about the app is you can control it, turning it on and off, from actually quite a ways away. And you can download without having to pull the SD card out. Here's some old videos from last night that I was doing, a point at the heavens. And it's going to blow you away what this thing shows at night. I'll put that videos up. Pretty cool though. And there's one other thing on this that nobody that I've seen on the internet put videos up on this that this camera does that it probably shouldn't do, shouldn't be able to do, and it does quite well, is you can run the IR during daytime and the aperture and everything will adjust to where it's not washed out. And with it doing that, I'm gonna show you a video here. Actually, I'm gonna put it in right now and explain. You can see through material with this thing. Okay, one thing I wanna do real quick with this camera, I tested something out and it worked. Under normal IR cameras that are on the market, you have to buy a special filter to put on the front. 
because they have it so like in the daylight in a washout uh there is no auto adjusting with the iso or aperture or anything so when it does everything turns white so you have to buy a special filter to darken everything up but then what that enables a camera to do is literally see through a little bit thinner black material now i'm running the uh, color mode on this but i have a sign inside this t-shirt i'm going to go into the ir mode no ir lights either it works that's a white sign that my girlfriend had made for me it's scanner guy 1968 you can almost read it i know it looks like eyes but them are flashlights shining and then there's i think an eagle or something on the bottom so you can see through material Is that wicked or what? That is cool as heck. So what I want to do is take you through, show you some clips of videos where we went and looked for gear, and I pointed it at the space, and you get an idea on it, and then we'll come back in and finish talking about it. Behind that tree about 100 yards, that tree is about 120 yards from me. Quite a few of them. So what I'm going to do is bring the thermal up and show you, dump the car anyway, so. Yeah. Four of them. Couple hundred yards out. Yeah, that's pretty good. You can see the hay in there as well. Mother here. That's pretty cool. Somebody's trail cam. Pick it up that deer. Long ways away. All right, it's a pretty dreary day out, and I don't know why that time is wrong on there. Right now, it's probably about just before dusk, almost 5 o'clock. And that deer stand you're looking at is probably 150 yards back. And I'm in a full color mode, and it does a pretty good job as far as uh, enhancing everything, lightening it up to where you can actually see. Here comes a vehicle right now lights on seems like the shutter speeds quite high yet but when it gets dark the color mode doesn't do the greatest but i wanted to show i don't think there's any deer out there right now let's show what it does just before dark i can't see up there right now if there is an animal a deer or something i'd never be able to tell so it does enhance quite well if you got a little bit of light for the color mode all right, it's quite a bit darker now. See something white up in there, the upper left of that field. Not sure what that is. But we don't have any fog, so right now. But this is performing better than I thought it would with the, oh, that's a reflection is what that light is. See it going across the screen. Definitely, uh, like I said, that farm's pushing a mile away. And yes, the shutter speed is dropping down the darker it gets. But is it going to get much worse than this? Total pitch black 
it'll be unusable. The white, anyways, or the color mode. I just want to scan over and see if I see a deer or something, and I'm switching over to IR, and we're going to test out the onboard IR again, light, and then the add-on one I got, which is by far my best IR flashlight. It's zoomable. Going into IR mode now, let me drop the focus, uh, camera down a tiny bit. All right, I'm in the IR mode. It's actually darker now. I had to go switch the battery out. And it's pretty much pitch dark right now. There's level one for the IR. Level two. Three. Four. Five. Six, seven. That's all you got is seven levels, which is a lot. Every time I breathe and talk, it's the wind's blowing into it. I might have to move the camera. There's something in that tree, though. I'm going to move the camera with the wind. You can see there it's quite a bit better. I had too much reflection back there. But that there tree line is... Almost 200 yards back, right around 200 yards there, 140, maybe more. And it shoots a long ways. I know I've seen some people putting reviews on the website saying they can't see far with it, but this is an honest 240 yards right there with the stock IR light. This, uh, that tree right there on all my flashlight videos is 90, 90, man, that wind's coming, 93 meters away. The tree right here is 62. 93. Oh, rain's coming. It does eat the battery, the IR. I got it cranked all the way up. I'm wondering about turning it down see if you can see almost as far uh, battery I wouldn't see the battery life last an hour current dump at six five four three two that's only a second level for IR and it's well over a hundred meters Let's make sure I'm 100% focused here. I don't know, that almost looks better, don't it? If you're far away. Now I'm going to switch over to my Zoomy IR light. I think I've got a review on it on my YouTube channel. It's one of the only, uh, it's a wicked IR light. So let's switch over to that. Look at that baby. So you put a mount on the top of there. That's what you mean. I'm not even zoomed in on the IR. I got it widened out. Prefer to focus that IR in. Man, you, you can see something easily 300 yards away. No problem. Let's go back out, about right there. Thought I saw some movement up there. This is a killer IR camera. This you don't, you're not gonna know until you get one. It's hard to hold though, so get a tripod. Man, you can see everything with this, and I mean everything. Well, I'm going to risk it. I'm going to walk down the road, and we're just going to shine more in the field to get away from that fire sign. I mean, the weeds are in the way. But look at this. That is so clear. I wonder if it hit that bar a mile away. Focus in. No way. It is. It is literally reflecting off that farm. 
I'm sure of it. I want the ultimate IR. Just buy a mount. Quarter 20 mount for the top. And buy another uh, focusable wicked IR light. But if you don't have the flashlight. I'm on level 4 right now. And it literally does a pretty damn good job, don't it? Wow, it does. You don't really need a flashlight, but you get that extra punch if you buy a good enough one. But you're going to be hard-pressed finding a good enough flashlight to overcome the stock IR. That's just level 4. It's cold out. I'm going to run in and check the footage out. We might walk down the road, I don't know. And that's how I'm running the setup with that add-on flashlight. But you don't really need it. But it does help in certain situations. Got a quarter 20 mount on top of the camera. Alright, that's the Picasso Seymour 200. Rugged camera that I'm going to get an awful lot of use out of. But this is great for outdoors. Taking it in a lower light and even in dark situations. And it records very good video. Can't really complain about the thing. I really like it. And price-wise, price, price wise, a very reasonable. If you ask me, I've got thermal cameras. And there's goods and bads on thermal compared to this. But uh, bang for buck, it's hard to beat it. And if you want to shine it up at the heavens at night, that's the way to go. And I'm going to try to hook it to one of my big telescopes and see if I can't use it on there. You gotta check the link out down below for this thing. You'd be very impressed with what I'm telling you. It does a lot more than what people think. Pretty awesome camera. Stay tuned for some more video work on that up in the night sky and stuff. You'd be impressed.